Hello everyone, and thanks for tuning into today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather. It's 10 to 14 days for today's second video. Day 10 will take us to the 2nd of March, and we'll be able to extend up beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe we'll try a couple of weeks, have a look at CFS B2 at the end of the video. But the next four weeks gets into the second half of March. I should get on that for you at a moment. Just say that the first video today was our 6 a UK weather forecast. Please like, share, and subscribe on both of today's videos. So, show one for doing that. So starting with the latest ripple of that from EarthNoSchool.net, we can see that we're drawing up a long fetch southwest wind today. We've changed wind direction. We've gone from the east to southeast to south to now southwesterly. And of course, that is a much wilder wind direction. The air originating from the Azores, even south of the Azores, maybe somewhere near Canary Islands. So uh, it's certainly feeling a lot milder out there today. The price paper, of course, is areas of low pressure now uh, have nothing to stop them, block them, from heading in from the Atlantic. So we're going to be seeing increasingly unsettled weather, wet and windy conditions over the next few days. But at least it will be mild. Our latest temperature observation from XC Weather shows that uh, we are in a much milder air mass now. 15 degrees flashing away there. At various weather stations, under side at 15 degrees, for example. <coughs> So, so if one Newcastle is at 14 uh, degrees, we've also got Bulmer at 15 degrees, coming down to Midlands, Birmingham's at 14, to Western is at 12, Nottingham's at 13 uh, as well, Shobdam is at 13 degrees, and Northwick is at 13 degrees as well. So many areas reaching the teens, South Day, mid teens in a few places too, and it's a big change on what we've had over the past couple of weeks. Sanctuary temperature ticked up slightly yesterday. I think we're now sitting at 3.9. That's 0.1 of a degree. Bubba sitting at 99. Obviously, that's going to uh, start rising significantly over the coming days. Bees with GFS, up red temperature and precipitation on samples. Next couple of weeks, we're at Birmingham today. Red line is the third year upper air temperature actual Birmingham. We're starting off above average, of course, with the upper and surface temperatures at the moment. Later next week, we're going to find the upper air temperature coming down. Could be coming a little bit cooler. Uh, then perhaps another mild spell opening up sometime around the 2nd to the 4th of March. Overall, just quite close to average. The main story is probably going to be more in the way of precipitation, actually, lots of rainfall spikes there, precipitation spikes from beginning to end. There's plenty of wet weather to come. Temperature anomalies for the next five days coming out significantly above average. Could be about uh, four or five degrees above normal in some areas. Large parts of Europe are included in that as well. In the six to ten day time frame, well, still a little bit above average, but starting uh, to come down closer to normal. And in the ten to fourteen, we actually turn a little bit cooler than average for Scotland, but still slightly above average for England and Wales. Uh, precipitation anomalies for the uh, next seven days, west of an average in most western regions, nearer normal, further east. And if we have a look at the 8 to 14 day precipitation anomaly, then we see also uh, above average in many areas. It's going to be unsettled and it's going to be largely mild, but uh, we will see both temperatures, as I say, coming down a little bit um, when we get into start of March. Right, let's start going. <coughs> So, so when well, they start going for chart data, then we start the latest UK bet Euro run. We're talking big night on Sunday, low pressure bringing wet and windy weather in from the Atlantic on Sunday. And then into Monday, we're into a cool, showery, westerly flow through the early part of next week. But that's midnight next Thursday. The next low then is waiting in the wings, ready, ready to bring another bout of wet, windy weather in with it. This is how ICOM is shaping up. So, again, yeah, wet and windy on Sunday into Monday. Then we're into to those rather coolish, showering westerly winds should be early part of next week for the next area of low pressure that's all whip itself up to the northwest of Scotland through Thursday uh, next week. That's another bout of wet and windy weather on the way. The KMA, all much of a muchness for Sunday, which looks like a pretty wild day. Might even be named storm potential with that area of low pressure. I'll have to wait and see. Uh, regardless, into next week, it's going to be cool and showering. 
of those unsettled conditions. Stay with us up to day 10. Ah, oh, that looks quite stormy there. That's the 3rd of March. Quite cold with that as well, bringing the wind from a northwesterly direction. So a bit of cold zonality could deliver some snow to Scotland. Likely to be cold rain, though down in the south and the gfs midnight run again looking unsettled wet wind on sunday then showering through the early to middle part of next week before the next batch of wind and rain heads in later next week and then next weekend well looking really unsettled again very cyclonic conditions then heading up to day 10 uh, with a deep area of low in from the atlantic look how cyclonic it is into the uh, further through the first week of March, I should say. Winds are actually going into the north there, so it's going to be a bit colder as well. Maybe shower turning wintry temporarily before the next batch of wet and windy weather heads in. So this looks like a very, very unsettled first week to March, I have to say. And um, then we've got the uh, GFS 6 said wet and windy for Sunday to Monday, then cool and showery to the early to middle part of next week, more wind and rain later next week, and into uh, the uh, first day of March, that's Saturday the 1st of March, that looks wet and windy as well, and then turning colder by day 10 with winds going into the uh, west, and then low pressure uh, dropping south, which we catch that might deliver some snow up to uh, the north and pulling in a cold Northerly wind in its way. It's all low pressure, low pressure, low pressure. Atlantic unleash. Atlantic strikes back. We turn up the Atlantic. The Atlantic awakens whatever Star Wars uh, button you want to add to that. Um, it looks pretty much like we're under a cost now, I have to say, for uh, the next couple of weeks. And particularly through that first week of March, looking very, very unsettled with low pressures all over the place. Well, if you're enjoying the video, <laughs> why wouldn't you be? Uh, then uh, please do like, share and subscribe. Thanks so everyone for doing that. Drop a comment on so what you think about this and all of our videos and content. Don't forget to tell your friends about guys whether it's getting to subscribe to so everyone for doing that. About 45 subscribers will get us to 19.6k. So if you could give us a sub, that'd be amazing. Thank you so much everyone. Uh, GM, once more looking uh, really wet and windy. On uh, Sunday into Monday, very into cool shower dishes should be early to middle part of next week before more low pressures are rattling through around days 8, 9 and 10. For all that's a bank cake there. Uh, day 10, high pressure around the Azores, low pressure around ice. It's a classic positive NEO type setup with a strong Atlantic zonal flow taking us into the beginning of meteorological spring. And they've got the ECM rounding it all off of the chart data. Wet and windy on Sunday of that low, then rather showering and coolish with westerly winds early to the middle part of next week. Um, another big glow out in the Atlantic there, that Saturday 1st of uh, March, that comes sweeping in through that first weekend of March, bringing more heavy rain in with it. In the extended with the East Gen, again, it looks very unsettled with low pressure, bringing further bouts of rain. Sometimes mild air coming up from the southwest, sometimes colder from uh, the northwest, but all the time low pressure and Atlantic driven. And this is the precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from tobestshow.com. So uh, we are opening the door to the Atlantic today and we're going to have further bouts of rain coming and going. That gets us to the weekend, for example, Sunday looking uh, a very wet and windy day. And then into next week, we'll actually get a bit of a break and it's more showery. It show could be a bit windy actually for high ground in the north and the west. And then we end up with uh, more low pressure, bringing further bouts of rain there when we get to day 10. These are the options on the table within the ECM Ensemble today. For day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office gets us to the second of March. 16 members of the ECM Ensembles with deep low pressure, very cyclonic conditions right over top of the UK. Island 14 with low pressure heading in from the Atlantic with a strong westy flow. 11 low pressure out in the Atlantic, but a little bit of a ridge from the southwest. So could be slightly drier, I suppose, but I suspect that ridge is quite transient and this low will um, flatten it off. But anyway, that could be a, few, a little bit drier there. And then we've got 10 uh, with low pressure right o over the country again and winds in uh, from the northwest. All options are looking uh, really unsettled at day 10, really, to be honest. And then in two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. 
It gets to the 7th of March. 27 members of the East Ensemble still with low pressure and control. 14 with low pressure dominating. And 10 with low pressure just out, out to the west. So again, low pressure's in control. There. There's a bit of a ridge to the east. But they're all westerly. They're all Atlantic driven. They're all zonal through that first week of March. And uh, CFSB2 finally, these are 500 millibar heights. I'll just break it down into week periods. The first week period takes us from the 20th, 26th of February. The next week with low pressure in the Atlantic. So it's an increasingly unsettled scenario. And then week two is the 27th of February, 5th of March. Low pressure up around uh, Iceland and Greenland. High pressure down towards the Azores. Flat as a pancake with, with a zonal westy flow. East Sierra, um, I should say, we clear that are shifting in a more unsettled direction, as I've been anticipating they would do. Week three will be the 6th to the 12th of March. Again, low pressure dries in from off the Atlantic. And then finally, week four is the 13th. 19th of March, and maybe started to build some higher pressure to the south with low pressure weight to the northwest, and the jet stream just starting to drift a bit further off. That might be slightly drier and warmer, especially so down in the south. Finally, let's quickly see what the GFS 6 then was doing from a stratospheric perspective. Um, oh, this side we're starting off blue colors cause cold temperatures in the stratosphere at 10 HPA over the Arctic and the North Pole. That's the stratospheric polar vortex, or oh, the polar vortex at its roots in the stratosphere. Um, over the coming days, we start to see a bit of a warming beginning to gather over towards eastern portions of Siberia, but still, although stretched, the uh, polar vortex was not truly uh, in business there through the closing days of February. Now, in the extended range, we find warming gathering pace. That's how we end up by the 8th of uh, March. We've got significant warming taking place over uh, Russia and a big displacement of the stratospheric polar vortex down into the North Atlantic. So whether that would evolve into a genuine sudden stratospheric warming event for the second week of uh, March, which is when I'm sort of anticipating we might get an SSW, but whether that would be a technical SSW starting there, had to wait a few more days to see. But uh, into March, it looks like we're going to be watching out for the stratosphere. Of course, we'll be beyond the tropical winter then, but it can still have an SSW in March can still have impacts on the uh, spring, late March into April, we might be having to look out for some um, unseasonably cold and uh, maybe, you know, uh, quite nasty weather for farmers, gardeners and growers. So if you are, are a farmer, or gardener, or grower, keep watching this space to see how this uh, evolves as we push on further through the spring. And we should keep you updated. Okay, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please you like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you share one for DM out. Drop a comment. Let's so we think about this and all our videos and content. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Web is getting to subscribe to you. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Tomorrow, we're going to have a 6am broadcast. Jeremy Friday and a 10 to 14 day out. We may be live with a pub run. Uh, I have got the spring forecast to be cracking on with through the remainder of this week. So I'll let everybody know on the socials tomorrow afternoon, evening, how we're looking uh, for um, for the pub run. Right, well, you enjoy the rest of your Thursday. And for this one, though, that's all for now. And thanks so much.